All right, good morning, and we are going to be in Hebrews chapter 8 this morning. Hebrews chapter 8. And while you're looking for that, let me just give you all a reminder to please friend Nay Church of God on you, Virgin. Uh, many of you have done that in the past week or two already. Uh, and if you don't want to, that's fine as well. But my plan is is to take our praises and prayer concerns from Sunday morning, uh, those services, and add them all into a prayer list. And then Nay Church of God will invite you to this prayer list so that you can pray over it throughout the week. And then we can update that prayer list each week. Uh, but uh, if you're not logged into you version and uh, you're not friends with the church, then I can't invite you. So make sure you are uh, friends with Nate Church of God, that you have your Version account. If you're not sure, ask me and I can let you know. So with that, let's go ahead and read through our passage for today. It is Hebrews chapter 8, and we're going to read the whole chapter because it is in this chapter that the author of Hebrews gives us the main point of the whole book. Uh, look at verse 1. It says, the point of what we are saying is this. Uh, the literal Greek word that is used here uh, can be defined as the main point or the main thing. So all that the author has been talking about up until now, here is why. Here is the main thing. So starting in verse 1, it says, The point of what we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by man. Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, and so it is necessary for this one also to have something to offer. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest, for there are already men who offer the gifts prescribed by the law. They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle, see to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown to you on the mountain. But the ministry Jesus has received is, a, is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is mediator is superior to the old one. And it is founded on better promises. For if there had been nothing wrong with that first covenant, no place would have been sought for another. But God found fault with the people and said, The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they did not remain faithful to my covenant and turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will I teach. No longer will man teach his neighbor or a man his brother saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. By calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete. And what is obsolete and aging will soon disappear. All right, a great passage with a lot of good stuff in here. But before we jump into this, let me say this past week... Um, I happened to stumble across some of my social media stuff in other online accounts, and I was noticing that some of those online accounts, they had avatars of me that were 
rather out of date. Uh, <laughs> they had me with my goatee instead of the beard. I mean, the horror of it all. How could this be? So I figured I would take a little bit of time and change those. And, and as I worked through that process, I noticed that a lot of you also have social media accounts or other areas where you have avatars as well. And these avatars are fun to make. They're fun to update. I, I love seeing other people's creations of themselves and how they perceive themselves to look. Uh, I especially love the ones that look so close to the person. Uh, those that represent the individual so well, you're like, yep, that is exactly who that is. And I say all that to get to this point. The main point that we have in verse 1, a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by man. And this tabernacle is, in verse 5, a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. You see, last week we talked about the temple, uh, the temple that was built per specific specifications given to Moses. Moses saw a heavenly temple when he was up on Mount Sinai in, in Exodus chapter 25 uh, Moses went up to Mount Sinai and God said to him in verses 8 and 9 he said then have them make a sanctuary for me and I will dwell among them make this tabernacle and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you and so God then proceeds to show Moses this heavenly tabernacle and the chapter concludes with uh, verse 40 saying, See that you make them according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. And so Moses now has his marching orders, right? Now he has his marching orders. He takes this beautiful reality that he saw in heaven that God showed him, this heavenly tabernacle, and sets to work on creating a copy or a shadow, as the book of Hebrews says, of the tabernacle here on earth. <clears throat> and they work, they work hard, the children of Israel work hard at making it as close to perfect as possible. In fact, uh, as we mentioned last week, we see six chapters in Exodus dedicated to their building of this tabernacle. And you all remember reading those six chapters. They were meticulous. Each and every item defined and measured and hung with excruciating detail. And then we read in Hebrews that after all that work, after all that effort, there were still problems. Problems with the building, problems with the system. There were still issues. And that is why we read in verse 7, Hebrews 8, verse 7, For if there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, no place would have been sought for another. Now, let me stop right here and, and, and explain something. Am I saying that God has this beautifully perfected tabernacle in heaven, complete with a holy of holies uh, and a, the curtain and so on and so forth and all these things? No, no, I, I am not saying that. That is not at all what I'm saying. But listen, this, this talk of a tabernacle, although for the children of Israel, although it was a real and physical earthly building it was a real place it was the place that allowed sacrifice to be central in the profession of their faith and through the shedding of blood 
provide a way for sins to be forgiven and a relationship to be built between God and his people. And for the most part. Because as we know, and as Hebrews tells us, it was imperfect. But even though it was imperfect, it did provide a pattern of the spiritual reality of Christ's sacrifice that would one day take place. In other words, it was a shadow or a copy that looked ahead to a future reality. A future reality that is seen today by us in in four different areas. First, we see a future reality that replaces all those many gifts and sacrifices that had to be presented each and every day to absolve the guilt of the people. We see that replaced with Jesus' self-sacrifice that completely erases our sins. Verses 3 and 4 says, Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, and so it, is, so it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest, for there are already men who offer the prescribed, the gifts prescribed by the law. So in order for the people to be justified, to be made right before God, the law, the law had to be followed. Sacrifices had to be made in order for mankind to stand before God. And as we talked about uh, last week, only once a year could only the high priest, who was, would be a descendant of Aaron, be able to enter the Holy of Holies and stand in the presence of God. Only once a year to stand in the presence of God. And now, now we have the reality of a Messiah who paid the price once and for all instead of man sacrificing animals, God sacrificed his only son so that through that death, each and every one of us, not just the high priest, but each and every one of us can now enter God's presence and stand before the throne. It's awesome reality. The second, we see a future reality that replaces the center of worship from a physical building to the center of worship being anywhere we are. Uh, As Jesus told the woman at the well in John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, uh, Jesus said to the woman at the well, Yet a time is coming and it has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshiper the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and his truth. Jesus, even in his ministry on earth, was constantly pointing to a new reality where the debate over rather one must worship on a specific mountain or should they go to Jerusalem. This was a moot debate. But instead, there was a reality coming where we would live into true worship that takes place in the heart as we worship the Father in spirit and in truth. It's not a matter of where we go to worship, but a matter of worshiping where we are. Now, now let me caveat here. Many people take this new reality and state and say, see, I can worship anywhere. Therefore, we don't need to go to church. We don't need to get together. Well, you know what? Even the author of Hebrews who said this thought people might say this, Because after he finishes this section of discourse, he then makes this statement in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. He says, 24 and 25, Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, and let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. Yes, yes, we are privileged to have the ability to worship anytime and anywhere, to enter into God's presence, no matter where we are. And we should be worshiping all the time, wherever we are. But scripture, the inspired word of God, 
still reminds us to continue to meet together and to encourage one another all the more as we see the day approaching. Third, third, we see a future reality that replaces the inferior covenant promise with a superior covenant that we experience through Christ. Look at verse 6. Verse 6 says, But the ministry Jesus has received is superior to theirs, as the covenant of which he is mediator is superior to the old one, and it is founded on better promises. The old covenant was to the children of Israel, the Jewish nation. However, the new covenant is for everyone. It's available to all, Jews and Gentiles alike. The new covenant is a superior promise that God makes with mankind that he will forgive sin and restore communion with those who believe in this new high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord and not by man. Look at verse 13. And by calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete. And what is obsolete and aging will soon disappear. You see, finally, fourth, we see a future reality that replaces and changes our hearts. Through this new reality that we live in now, we become a new creation in Christ. Verse 10 says, This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write them on their hearts I will be their God and they will be my people. This covenant, this covenant, we become, through this covenant, through Christ, we become a new creation. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 asks us, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have received from God, you are not your own. You are bought with a price. In other words, let me tie this up like this. We live into a new reality in which God has created in us the tabernacle that we mentioned. That Hebrew says is a shadow on earth which was built by human hands, reflects much like our avatar that we built by human hands and is but a shadow or a copy of who we are. But this true tabernacle, the the true you, was and is being built by our Father in heaven. A creation much more beautiful than any avatar you could create. And a creation in which God now dwells. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, He is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Let's pray this morning. Father God, we thank you so much for creating us into your beautiful handiwork, your beautiful craftsmanship, creating in us the place where we can enter into your presence and worship you no matter where we are. Lord, allow us to continue to Worship in spirit and in truth, no matter where we go, no matter what we do. So that through our worship, others may see your love through us. God, continue to guide and direct us each and every day. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, again, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you checking it out online. I hope you guys got something out of this week. And until next week, God bless. Have a great week.